Glory, 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 and glory. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a new mind. Amen. Everyone say, I got a new mind. Got a new mind. Praise God. Boy, we needed a new mind. Now you can mind your own mind. And nobody else's. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 16. Praise you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All things are possible to those who believe. Amen. 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 So when you ask, you receive because you believe. You know, this morning as I was praying, the Lord showed me what we were going to do tonight. He said, I want to refresh my children's mind, cleanse them from foolishness. <laughs> so I just want you to know, if you didn't put your hands in your head, I hope not everyone's demons went into you <laughs> for your rebellious attitude. <laughs> Don't call me tomorrow for counsel either. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 16 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Preserve me, O God, for in you I do what? I do what? I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance in my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who's given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol or hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You know, there's a difference between the pleasures that are delivered from God and the pleasures that are delivered from the world. Amen? And right now we see a very big mixture. There are many organizations... Christian organizations, they're even mixing the pleasures of the world with the pleasures of God. It's called mixed anointing. And it is rampant all over the place. Wherever, where every place you look, you see that's what New Age is about. That's what all these false religions are about. They try to mix worldly pleasures with godly pleasures. And there's pleasures that come from God and pleasures that come from the world. And we have to be careful of that because in that mix of anointing, it's called New Age. It's New Agers. They're seekers of pleasures instead of seekers of God's presence. They're called pleasure seekers. In fact, we have a teaching called Pleasure, pleasure Seekers on Eternal Library, and it's got four teachings on it, and the package is called Toxic Culture. 
What does pleasure mean? It means to feel enjoyment, happiness, or satisfaction. So it's an emotion, isn't it? A pleasure is a seeking emotional, emotional fulfillment. Anybody ever sought an emotional fulfillment that nearly killed you? Don't raise your hands, because if I would ask you to, then you'd become a liar. <laughs> if you didn't tell the truth. <laughs> Amen? So this is powerful. He says, in his presence is fullness of joy. That's a fulfillment. In this. Now, we've talked before about false fulfillments. And then what happens is people are seeking false pleasures, which are actually false fulfillments also. And there is an area where there is a pleasure that comes from God that is a satisfaction. It is an encouragement. One of the pleasures that you and I must always maintain is knowing that the greatest pleasure for me and you is knowing we're pleasing God. If that pleasure isn't in you to please God, there's something wrong with you. There is a disconnect. If you're more apt to please everything else than God, then you're out of order. You're out of line. And you are disconnected from truth and reality. Amen? It says all, in all of this, we're to trust in him. He says, you are my Lord. I get counsel from you. You give me instructions. <laughs> I reset you before me. All the time. Amen? My, uh, my, my rest is in you. In his presence is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. There are pleasures of light and pleasures of darkness. Before B.C., before we were saved, we enjoyed the pleasures of darkness. But all of those pleasures all ended up with a tormenting result. Only the pleasures of God ended up in freedom. Everything else ends up in bondage. In James chapter 4. False pleasures. Is right now, the enemy is trying to entice us, because that's temptation, into false pleasures. He'll bring everything he can across your path to mislead you and to bring you into a trap of bondage. You know, uh, as for, um, I have seen so many times where children have received an inheritance or somebody's received an inheritance. And the first thing they do is begin to spend the money on their pleasures. That's a sign of disconnect. They begin to spend money on their pleasures, on their desires. In other words, kingdom business is not first. Does everybody understand that? And I've seen many people who've started that path. And it true, shows the true colors of an individual, where they're at. End up in destruction. Recycle right back again. Squander millions of dollars of inheritance. And usually end up dead, mental institutions, or permanently damaged in some area, error in jail and prison. In James 4, verse 1, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for what? Pleasure, that war in your members. So in other words, there is a war in you for the pleasure 
to seek pleasure from darkness or from light, that war is in you all the time. You lust, that lust is nothing but an overwhelming desire. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive it because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your dark pleasures. Does everybody understand that? Those are selfish employees. Then he calls, look at this, what he calls them, these individuals out. He says, adulterers and adulteresses. That doesn't mean that they're involved in sexual perversion. That means that they've put their pleasures as a God in their life. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world, pleasures with the world, is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You know, when there's truly a relationship with the Lord, everything you do, you know, some people say, well, you should be so sensitive to everything you do. Everything it should be, and don't get me wrong, I don't want to talk about religious but critical. Why? Because if you have a desire to please God, that is a pleasure. So everything that you and I would do, there should be that area that what, what I'm making decision, what I'm purchasing, what I'm giving, where I'm going, what I'm doing, is it pleasing God? If it's not pleasing God, I'm disconnected. Is the job I'm getting pleasing God? Is it in line? If, if I'm looking for everything for my own gain and not the gain of the kingdom of Christ, then I'm out of order. Because we are to live for the kingdom of Christ, in Christ, not for ourselves. Amen? And this is where that mixed anointing is. That mixed anointing that wars within me and you is the pleasure for darkness and the pleasure for light. There's a pleasure, if it's selfish, is that a pleasure of light or darkness? darkness? Darkness. Amen. It doesn't mean we can't have things. Do you understand that? But what it means is individuals put the pleasures before God, before the kingdom. You know, believe me, God checks us out every time, especially with money. It seems to be the number one thing. Money is the tester of all men. <laughs> what happens when you get money? What happens when you don't? <laughs> it's called the root of all evil, the love of money, right? Amen. Again, there's nothing about having nice things. But our priority is kingdom business. Amen. It's kingdom business. We're to be about our father's business, not our self's business, not the world's business. See, if people begin to seek more of God, it says seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all things will be added to them. But they keep seeking the hand of God instead of his face, and they begin to seek more of God's pleasures. Uh, more worldly pleasures instead of godly pleasures. Amen? He says, verse 5, Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain that the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace? Therefore, he says, God resists the what? The proud. But he gives grace to the humble. We know that's God's plan, isn't it? Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That means mixed anointing. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humility cures worldliness. 
Humility cures worldliness. Being humble. The battle is over pleasure, isn't it? It's over pleasure. You and I are pressed all the time, influenced. Everything we see, everything we, everywhere we go, there's an influence of for false fulfillment or fulfillment, satisfaction, looking for a pleasure. Amen? Amen? People turn to drugs, alcohol, pornography. They turn to all kinds of things that are even workaholics. Hallelujah. People pick up hobbies for a pleasure. And again, there's nothing wrong with a hobby. But then they put more time to the hobby than they do to the kingdom. Acts 1.49. Oh, happy days. Psalm 149. I mean, yeah, Psalm 149. What did I say? Acts. I said Acts? Acts. Snap. Acts 149. Don't go there. <laughs> Psalm 149. Sorry. Oh, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> We're going to go to Psalm 149. <laughs> Psalm 149 hike. <laughs> Honey, go long. <laughs> Woohoo! Let's speak it. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let true ministries in total freedom rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with a dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will what? Beautify the humble with salvation. So he takes pleasure in us. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Thank God you're out of bed. Now you can sing louder. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute. Everyone say execute. execute. Vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Now he's talking about spiritual warfare. To execute on them the what? Written judgment. This pleasure have all his saints. Even though it says this honor. For you it should be a pleasure. For me and you it should be a pleasure to be an intercessor. Amen. Amen. Acts 3. Oh, happy days. And the word tells us that the serpent is the most cunning beast God created. So he can outwit us very easily if we're not in tune with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Acts chapter 3 and verse 17. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be what? converted, that means turn away, that your sins may be blotted out 
so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who is preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. I want you to understand something. When you come into God's presence, if you do not get refreshed, there's something you've not confessed. Refreshing comes by the blood having access in every area of your being. If you're not being refreshed, there's something you better search out and find out where you haven't repented of something. Does everybody understand it? It could still be an offense of someone. It could be anything. It could be from your own tongue. It can be anything. Where have you not repented where you needed to repent? Is there self-justification? Whatever it is, are you touching unclean things? Amen? What's happening? Sin will prevent the refreshing of God's presence. Hallelujah. Psalm 147. Now remember, when the refreshing comes by God's presence, it is the fullness of joy. Amen. And in his presence are what? Pleasures forevermore. So he's going to lead you to pleasures that are given by him. Psalm 147. Oh, happy days. He does far above all we could ever ask or think. In verse 10, let's speak. He does not delight in the strength of horse, he takes no pleasure in the legs of man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy. So the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, reverence, honor, and respect. Well, why is that? Because you have a desire to please him. Amen? So if that desire to please him is there, then that, because you have the pleasure, it is a pleasure to you to please God. If it's not a pleasure to you to please God, you're disconnected. Second Corinthians 12. Pleasing him should be a pleasure to you and me. If it's not, we're living, something ain't right, and we're looking for false pleasures. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception, and his power is fear. So we're battling that all the time, aren't we? We're constantly battling these things. And the pleasure that's in our members, there's a pleasure for darkness and a pleasure for light. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Amen. Praise God. Uh, let's speak it. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I'd be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
Therefore, I take what? I take pleasure in infirmities. I don't know too many Christians that take pleasure in infirmities. Well, maybe they should. Well, you and I are supposed to love suffering. Why? What does it do? It settles us. It perfects us, right? Listen, why did he say this? Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches, in needs and persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am what? I'm strong. Why? Because he knew that every time he would fall into these places, Christ would deliver him and get the glory. See, now that's how the mind of Christ thinks. All right, Lord, I'm in this affliction right now, but you said you'll deliver me from it. And you'll get the glory. I know that I'm having, remember we talked about the, uh, uh, the problems, afflictions, and so forth? God delivers us out of all of our troubles. Amen. Amen. And he will if we let him. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Paul was saying, I take pleasure in the attacks from the enemy. Knowing that the Lord will deliver me out of every single one and get the glory. Why? Because he has a pleasure to see Christ getting the glory. See, so we, it should be a pleasure for me and you to see Christ get the glory. Amen? And it should be a pleasure for me and you that we please God. If that's not there, something's not right. There's a crack in the foundation or there's a disconnect. Hallelujah. Jesus will always get the victory if we let him. 2 Timothy 3. I have pleasure watching the wicked get arrested. Yay. Why? Because in hope that they will now come to the Lord. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? In other words, what we're doing is stopping the wicked from producing. Amen? For some of us, we had to get arrested just to stop using the dope. It was the only way we are going to stop. Either we were going to die, end up in a hospital, or get arrested. And for some of us, we had to get arrested for us to finally stop. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come, and we know that they're here. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure. Well, all of those things are all false pleasures that we just spoke on. They're, they're uh, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying his power from such people turn away. Hmm? Again, drugs, alcohol, all kinds of other things. Pornography, false pleasures, pleasures of sin. You know, the world pr promotes these false pleasures. They promote adultery. They promote fornication. They promote perversion. They promote lying. They promote sin. Amen? The world promotes these things, and unfortunately, too many so-called believers agree with some of them. The world promotes the murder of children, the abduction of children. The world promotes these things. They take pleasure in molesting children. That's why you and I must take pleasure in interceding for them. 
Amen? Oh, happy days. Titus chapter 3. Everybody there? In verse 1, let's speak it. Titus 3, 1. Says what? Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey and to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. In other words, they are seeking false pleasures. Does everybody understand that? And they have been taken captive. One of the things is that when you begin to drift from godly pleasures to even one false pleasure, it can grab hold of you and affect the rest of you. Amen? Various lusts and pleasures. In other words, lust we know is an overwhelming desire for a pleasure. Again, we've got to look at all areas. One of the things that influences, again, I want to share, mankind is the pleasure of having a lot of money. It's a false pleasure because they really believe that it's going to buy happiness. When I was in the world, I wanted the money because money brought power. And I always believed at that time as a heathen that money was everything. Because when you're brought up in the areas where you must become somebody, for what? To make money. You must get an education. For what? To make money. You could be a good sports player. For what? To make money. See, the end result in the world is money. Everything is money. So I used to work all, all day long. Of course, I did enough dope to keep you up for a week or two. So that was my excuse for getting high. But then it was no longer getting high. It was just using the dope so I could keep working to make money. And then you fall in the place where you take tremendous risks of going to jail for the rest of your life to make money. That's the world's end result is money. And money, the love of money, will put you right in hell. Are we okay? Amen. Reality. Glory. Proverbs 21. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Proverbs 21. In verse 16. I want to be a rock and roll star. <laughs> For fame, because it brings money. Praise God. Now I roll on the rock. He's the greatest star there is. Glory to God. Verse 16, is everybody there? Proverbs 21. Let's speak it together, please. A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. <laughs> he who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the unfaithful for the upright. Better to dwell in the wilderness than a contentious and angry woman. There is a desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. Whoa. So there is a desirable or pleasure for treasure for those who seek, who de dig deep in the God. See, the more you dig, the more oil you hit. See, we drill for wine, oil. Amen? We drill for oil. And that oil is the anointing. So the more that you get in, get in, get in, then you don't want to get out. Amen. But first you got to get in. And there are too many people knocking, waiting for someone to open the door when the door is already open. But the enemy puts that area there. There's so many veiled individuals in the world, it's incredible. 1 Thessalonians 4. Then our children inherit it until it's broke. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Oh, happy days. False pleasures. Is everybody there? Verse 1, finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. This is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness." Therefore, he rejects this does not reject man, but God, who also has given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, mind your own beeswax, and work out your own work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, that you may lack what? Nothing. 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 
Listen, as things begin to change in our life, you know, taking pleasures and pleasing God and knowing that there are worldly uh, pleasures that bring no rest. Worldly pleasures. <laughs> Jesus. Wor worldly pleasures bring no rest. Amen? They bring nothing but torment. Because it's a false pleasure. Think about addiction. It is a false pleasure. It brings no rest. And addiction doesn't have to be with drugs or alcohol. It could be with money or anything else. You could be addicted to anything. But it brings no rest. Only the pleasures that come from daddy bring us true rest. Amen? Simple teaching. Eat it. Let it become a part of you. Amen? He says, eat my words. Feed off of my faithfulness. Easy, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you like to say something, dear? <laughs> Did you get it? Good girl. <laughs> Lift your hands to heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Master, for your word. Lord, let the anointing and the discernment of wisdom and knowledge be imparted in us tonight. As we have prayed in exchange of the carnal mind for the mind of Christ, Lord, you've given us a clean mind tonight that we may receive your word. Let it now be sealed with the blood of Christ and the anointing of Christ so it becomes a part of our total being that we may discern false pleasures and godly pleasures. That we may expose them not only in our own life, but our homes and our surroundings. Have mercy upon us, Lord, for every area that we've touched and agreed with a false pleasure. We repent and ask that you'll wash us with the blood in those areas so that the spirit of the living God can regenerate us as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray, pray blessing on your people tonight. Establish them, perfect them, settle them as they embrace their trials and tribulations, knowing that you're going to receive the glory and that it may be pleasing to you because we want to please you. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Grow for it.